with no canvas. Subscribe right now. Senior Show. Beautiful evening. 1987. We're almost ready to graduate. That's Rob's department, isn't it? No, 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 no I didn't do that. Times they are a changing. I haven't looked at this footage in almost 30 years. It's almost 30 years. This is late spring, 1987. We're 2017 here. We're not yet to spring break. So we're not even to the 30 year mark where we went to California yet, here in our present time. But back at school, we're past it. So this is almost the end of the school. Every student that is a senior gets to put one piece in the senior show. This was an unusual year. They didn't have beer. I don't know if that was what it was or whether we were getting just tired of doing the same old thing. A lot of our friends had gone. They weren't there this year. Or at least I don't see them. <laughs> we get away. <laughs> but we have the regular gang no, here. It's a real, it's a real speech. <laughs> um, Ted, I'm still right there. Oh, come on, be normal. Hello. We had been doing video for <laughs> about. I'm actually opening for Ted's birthday, okay? Oh, really? Okay. Two and a half years. We had done just about everything we knew to do in our free time when we weren't creating art. And you still haven't seen it all on this channel. We've barely scratched the surface. But this is where the art school portion is going to be coming to an end. We've still got a summer coming up. We all go our separate way in summer. And then we have the next year where we start our careers. So I'm skipping ahead temporarily here to give a sense of the whole. And then I'll be coming back to where we started and spending a long time on that two and a half years. Videotapes have gotten better. The videotape quality of this tape and the sunny evening has maintained the color and the quality. I waited all four years for potato it's the same this is our senior opening. video camera, but it it's retained it over 30 years sure. better. It's a higher caliber tape. So I feel more like I'm actually there. I remember this night, a very boring evening. Everybody was commenting on how not having the beer really change things. This is a really big thing at college. These shows, we would have openings throughout the year, but the senior show, of course, is, is the main show of all of our work. And we only get one piece. But to get together, you can tell people are actually kind of in a good mood, just bored. People are looking a little healthier. The winter's over, people get out, get a little more sun. For the most part, people start to get a little more healthy and uh, normal looking at this time of year, I felt. So, I was just hanging out. How about Tom would be here and everything, so I thought I'd bring him on. Yeah. Where is he? I don't know, I figured he'd be here for I'll be at the other one. I told Rich to come. Where's Tom? Where's I Rich? Bring the packs, I'll be out of it. Where's Fred? Don't get so close. I keep talking about the battery. I don't have enough battery, but we covered the whole thing, though. One of the things that is kind of like secondary. It's a long video. I'm just going to let it roll. 
This is just going to be the <laughs> footage. Talking about that. Remember how it used to be like a keg here and a keg yeah. there? Uh, endless kegs. And when yeah. these kegs ran out, we went up to the other keg. Yeah. <laughs> Artists don't need beer to create, but when we're celebrating the creation, <laughs> it's nice to have. I thought we had a pretty nice showing of a lot of different things for our senior show. A good broad variety of artists. I've never really felt like I can get a lot from this type of quiet, stagnant colors. artwork. But that's just me. But a world of experience in a lifetime shows me that what really happens is the artist does touch a few, and he definitely learns in and of himself, and he takes that, and he goes through the world, and in that way, the world is changed. Oh, the installation. Should we or should we not? <laughs> I had a piece in the show, but this is my interactive installation. This is my piece. And the answer is you should. So do get involved. Okay. Remember how it used to be like there used to be a cake here and a cake there. And then everybody used to drink all the beer here and then go and drink all the beer Lovely. We're going to drink all the ginger ale here, and then we're going to go over there and, and drink all, all the ginger ale over there. there. Okay. Oh, I like that piece. I, I like that a lot. I guess it's an etching. So now we just kind of mosey up to the library, see who's up there. Hmm, where is she? There she is. <laughs> That's Mimi. We're all eating apples. One of the things the school provided for this show was apples. Potato chips and ginger ale. It's really rare to see all these art students eating apples because, you know, they don't look like the healthiest bunch, some of them, but this night we're all eating, <laughs> eating apples <laughs> and we grabbed them. Some of us had very limited budgets for food and various things. I remember I got down to 175 um, and I did everything I could to eat. Um, I normally carry a weight of about uh, 220, 215, 220. So, <laughs> 175. Yikes. See, I guess we're having our barbecue tonight, huh? Yeah. I was skinny. Tuna chips and apple juice. It's pretty sad. Maybe they get the, maybe they get the fruit at the other place. Mm-mm. It's the same. I'm not sure. I don't think my wife has changed very much. We don't have the time to get as good a hair anymore. <laughs> this was the 80s after all, right? Here's a more recent photo of Mimi. So Mimi was a guard at the station building. And she was on duty that night. So she couldn't go to the opening. This was going to be the summer that some of the things cemented themselves a little bit more. Mimi and I went back I to Florida. <laughs> I fortunately didn't have to work at my dad's architectural office again. I uh, think I convinced my parents to let me be a lifeguard at the beach. My old swim coach happened to be the head lifeguard. And uh, he always appreciated my uh, my efforts and my professionalism and uh, I knew that if I just took the training I'd be able to get a job there and so I did. That was a fun summer. 
Seven dollars an hour. Woo! That was like over the minimum wage. I think the minimum wage at the time was five. I never saw a penny though. Uh, the money just went to my education and uh, my parents took care of all that and the scholarships. So I kind of just, if I didn't enjoy what I was doing, I wasn't happy because I'm not getting paid. I better enjoy it. So lifeguarding was my choice and I enjoyed it. The worst thing that happened that year before anything's put on it was that I got that two-seater car. It was all that we could afford and I needed a dependable car for work. I was coming back and I was going to be starting a job and I needed a reliable car because I had to commute to Washington almost to Washington every day, an hour commute. And I'd be carpooling with my uh, buddy Mick, who I worked with. And the only car that I could afford that was reliable, that was a two-seater, was a Pontiac Fiero. Uh, Mick got a Hyundai. He, they were $5,000 at the time. I think he he made a pretty good choice. Um, they used to have a commercial, you could buy two Hyundais for the price of another car. Getting them home is the only problem. I like the, I still remember the commercial. The guy had two cars, drive one about 20 feet, get out, go and get in the car behind the other one and drive it about 20 feet, and then get back in the front car again and drive it about 20 feet. <laughs> and then you get back and keep on doing that the whole way home. Ah, if I had gotten a Hyundai, things might have been a little bit different, but I got the uh, two-seater car. The Pontiac Fiero was the only thing that I could afford that I enjoyed. It was used, but I got a good deal because it was so small. Mimi and I got a lot closer. We had a lot more solitary quality time together. Ted already had a girlfriend, Hillary, and um, they spent a lot more time together. And we did less and less things that fall together. When it first gets cold, watch the snow day video. I give a perspective on how the car changed just about everything. And that's right before December, maybe November. And then I think it was December 7th that Ted was in a car accident and uh, was killed. And, uh, that was that. Uh, life would never be the same. Art school was over anyway. Uh, and quite frankly, if I'm going to be quite frank about everything here, I was a little bit scared. I was a little bit scared. What was going to happen? Everything that we'd gotten accustomed to. I mean, you know, people feel this way about high school. You always see these movies about high school. How in high school it's like everybody thinks that's the world. That's the world. That's the way things are going to be. And, you know, the football players, cheerleaders, and, and all that stuff. You get all the stereotypes. Well, in college, I didn't really think that's the way it was going to be, but I started to get my sea legs a little bit. I started to get more of a feel. It was a natural place for me because I was an artist. I'd been a creative artist in my life. So I started to feel like the, this was a place where it really was, I wasn't totally comfortable, but I was learning a lot, and... It was where I was supposed to be. I came to feel that it was where I was supposed to be. But I remember I graduated just a short while after this, and I looked around at all the people, and I said, geez, geez. all these other people graduated too. So this isn't really an accomplishment. Anybody, I think, could graduate from this school. <laughs> the question is, what are you going to do with it? What did you learn? And I was a little bit scared because I knew that this, this way of being the safe harbor, this place where we're all brought here and we're doing what we're supposed to do, was going to end. I already saw that, there's Chris Panzer, he was our, one of our bass players. He was our bass player, yes, for both bands. Um, he lives out in the islands now, over by Puerto Rico. There's Cindy. Cindy doesn't like to be photographed. And they had, they had you know, they really went all out here. They had this original uh, walking art costume thing. You know, look at, look at costume now, it's all the rage, you know? Uh, so they were real innovators. They were ahead of the curve. But I was really scared because this was a comfortable little place. And I had my friends. And I saw that things were changing. We had had our time. There's Shelly. So much to say about Shelly. I've got to get in touch with her. There was so much that we were leaving behind. 
you could tell that we were all changing. We were going to go look at different focuses. Every one of us was doing the same thing. And then the art we were went all totally focusing on different things. We weren't the same anymore. The fun, the creativity, the camaraderie. Yeah, it was like just about over. What would happen oh, next? What would happen stop. next? Yeah, I was scared. She, she lost the headphones. But at the same time, I embraced it because I knew I really wasn't supposed to be here. And I felt like I got a lot from these people and these places, but I felt I needed to do so much, and it was time to start. And the first move I made was to get a corporate, fo corporate 100 job. I was an executive. I wore a tie to work every day. I was one of the two uh, illustrators in the, um, the main production center for the entire A&P supermarket food chain. Uh, Mick Ellison was uh, there before me. He was a senior illustrator and I was his compadre and uh, loyal friend and I enjoyed that year. Here we are, 1987 opening. Boring so far. Let's go find out if it really is. Drawing little crosshatch drawings of all the food and uh, I, I really treasure that time with him. But that wasn't what my life was going to be. <laughs> I wanted out so bad and when he quit in about a year, I said, okay, that's wow. it, I'm quitting too. <laughs> I can't take this job with Mick's not here. So I quit. Wow. I ripped the rug out from underneath myself Wait, and I said, I'm gonna be a freelance Wait, illustrator. Again. That's I what moved. I did. I did freelance illustration. Like, like that, I just, like, go, I just like, couldn't oh, be employed. Oh, that, okay. I just, it just wasn't for me. What? What was I thinking? Here's my piece. More on that later. Even though yeah, I have a, been employed a, yeah. periodically, like for um, scenic shops or a movie or something like that, I think that's the last time I was ever employed, <laughs> and I'm so, so glad. In that way, I guess I am an eccentric artist. Anyway, I had my piece there. I tell you, man, I had abandoned my uh, graphic illustration skills in favor of fine art there at the end. And I kind of use fine art as an excuse to, you know, do a little bit of easier stuff. And why did I want to do easier stuff? I wasn't, I wasn't lazy. I wanted to do more video and uh, music. And I wasn't there to do video and music. So I used my art to get good grades and to make sure I completed all my art things. Um, in the general fine art sense, I, I went away from commercial art so that I would have the freedom to do what I desired to do. Prepare myself for video production and the movie field that I wanted to go into in television. And continue to work with my drumming and my musical appreciation. So in a way, General Fine Art just taught me the concepts I needed to look at life and to understand what I was going through and what the world was going through and, and give me a unique perspective. And I, I used my abilities in art to give myself the latitude I needed to make that shift. So here we are at the other Fox opening part of it. Where's the beer, man? Where's the beer? Beer. And uh, there's no beer there either. They did have some more d'oeuvres. I like that. The shower with the uh, paintings of the people in the shower. Pretty cool probably could do without the toilet, but I'm sure there was significant meaning. You know, um, not too many people really talked about the art pieces. I, <laughs> I gotta get Rob to tell me what that is. I just, I like art that talks and relates. And I guess these stagnant things on the walls just weren't my thing and in life they just weren't my thing and I didn't do that. A lot of people did and uh, I don't know, one of my roommates I had, Randy Ray, first year, he still is doing the same thing that he was doing. He, he knew what he wanted, he knew what he, he was doing and he's still doing it now. Of course every piece is different and unique and com communicating in a different way. And, conveying something different to himself and others, uh, but he is still a fine artist um, doing all kinds of fine art things. Man, 
and uh, he uh, didn't finish the school. He went somewhere else. I gotta catch up with him. He's in New York, I believe. We didn't have very much in common. I liked him a lot, and I wanted to be more friends with him, but he had other interests, and uh, he pursued them. Why not with his life? And he's doing some nice pieces. I can tell when I go to his site and I take a look. So, life is coming to an end. Life as we know it is coming to an end. You know, in high school, most of my friends were either in the grade beyond me or in the grade before me. Uh, in college, except for my roommates and this little gang that I had that uh, we lived with and hung with, that was very much the case too. Uh, some of the people, he was in my uh, first year uh, dorm. Um, there's Lori. Really liked Lori. I was hoping we'd get together in the beginning, but it didn't, uh, didn't go. I still thought she was cute and a nice smile. And I would bug her on the video. That was about the extent of our relationship after that. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the people I respected that I learned from were one year ahead of me. And I had some friends before, you know, the year after. And, um, I think, I think we're all ready to disperse. So, what does this all mean? What does this all mean? I can tell you that I probably am getting more from this right this minute than I did then. Look at these guys I'm just sitting there. So unusual. This is even even worse than the other senior show the year before where I did the commentary on it and nobody was doing anything. Uh, that was a strange time too. And we had a killer year. So I don't know what it is about the senior shows that just is it's just boring as all get out. And we had beer the year before. I remember we had a little video thing where Sam was making a beer. He's taking all the the leftover foam and trying to make one good beer out of it. And check that out. Fox opening, I believe. Senior show. Um, I believe I have that on there. It's in five parts. That's the last year's show. Rich and. Tom and I think Fred even had a piece in there. Some of those guys. So we'd still see them at various events and go skateboarding and play music and stuff. But this last year, you know, we had the Mimi and Shelley, we had the Hillary and Lisa, uh, we had the privatization of going our own separate ways. Rob had the Beth and uh, Tracy. And, uh, Want to say stuff? No, you can do it into this microphone. The old world was changing. We had freshman year, everything was new. We really hit our stride in sophomore and junior year. And then senior year, we just finished it out. We just finished it out. People started to knuckle down and say, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? There's Phil from the first year. He lived above us in uh, 132 Landville. So we started freelancing. We started getting our sights set on what we're going to do. We had one more summer to enjoy before we had to hit it. And uh, that's pretty much all there is. I hope that some of these people... You guys look bored. Yep. <laughs> you guys look bored. <laughs> I hope that maybe I'll redo this. Some people will write in and they'll say, oh, I, that's me right there. A few people I've already been in contact with that, you know, mentioned that they had gone to the school, but they're really not chiming in. I know a lot have died. Gosh, I know at least one, two, three, four, five, six, probably seven that I know of died. It's like major close people. It's like, ah, maybe that's the way it is in life too, and you just don't know. Sometimes when you lose touch with someone, 
you lose touch with them because they're not around. I don't know what her thing was. She didn't like being on video, so we bugged her. I don't know if she was just pretending or if she really didn't like being on video. Maybe, Beth, you'll uh, make a comment here. Let us know. <laughs> Ted, Ted used to like to make uh, imitations of people, especially Beth. Here he comes. Uh, uh, I just wondered if you, you saw what John was looking for John. <laughs> Just a few fragments of the of the past. All these pieces, they don't have enough pretty colors in them. Hey, oh, there's some guys over there. You know, I got up this morning, I ran out of moose. I ran out of moose. I couldn't believe it. When I first got there, I thought Lori was a normal girl. I was looking for a normal girl. And so we, we hit up right away uh, with one another um, and I guess we just didn't have anything to talk about or we just didn't have anything in common or I don't know what it was but um, according to Cindy she's not a normal girl anyway so maybe we didn't have, didn't have uh, what we needed to have um, I ended up uh, with uh, Mimi the normal girl from uh, Sarasota and uh, you know in a way I'm a normal guy. In a lot of other ways, I'm not a normal guy. Um, in this crowd, I'm a normal guy. And uh, I've had a normal life. But not a boring life. A normal life. Now, people that know me and my family and things like that, they would say I'm an artist type. You know, and I haven't had a normal life. But I disagree. I think I've had a very normal life. But I'm eccentric, and I'm I'm consciously aware, and uh, without uh, ever doing drugs or getting into anything like that, I have been very, very, very. Heightened, consciously aware, and about that in my life, the artistic thought process has been very strong in my mind the whole way through. But I've been living as a regular person, not doing outlandish things. As we wind down the end of our senior year, it just goes out like a, a whisper, and it's going to be over. And, of course, you know what I'm going to say next. It's far from over. It's just beginning. That looked really cool. Oh, life Much is like going to throw its challenges and curveballs at us for sure. And I'm going to react as an artist to well, everyone. I was getting the station building, but you're in there a little bit too. And I want to bring that out. That's really what I'm doing here with No Canvas. So Rob, final comments. This will do something goofy. I'm trying so hard to get yeah. something good. <laughs> I know, because nobody's doing anything good. No beer. The school is going down real <laughs> fast. Because they're getting cheaper. Well, they think they're getting better because they're saving money and spending on better things. Nope. No, it's it's the Maryland, Maryland's state law. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Where's that sun? Where's that sun? There it is. Bye-bye. With no canvas, subscribe right now.